You are listening to Single Smart Female. This is Jen, explaining the possibilities in your love life and examining your mantourage dating experiences. I am here to help you do life and love on your terms by tipping the scales of love permanently in your favor. So don't forget to text this episode to all of your single smart girlfriends and let's get started. Hey, hey, love a girl. It's your romantic fairy godmama coming to you today with a romantic fairy godmama quickie. Now today's topic. Today's topic's an interesting topic. It's called the tender swindler. Now many of you know that this is a Netflix documentary on a man. He comes from Israel and he has made a living out of romantic encounters that he sucks women financially dry. And I want to talk about it today because it's a really important topic. And when I go into all this, I want you to all understand there is no victim blaming here on my end. What I am here to do is to take apart some of the things that were happening and instruct you on signs that don't lead you down the same path with anybody. It's incredibly frustrating to hear all these things, but I do think as women, we need to be more in tune and understand certain things so that we can prevent certain things in our life. I'd I'd love to say that it should never happen, but on the same page, let's acknowledge what is happening. And as you step into the world of becoming an adored woman, know that you don't have to be a victim to anything like this. Now, I've done podcasts before on catfishing, stuff like that. And so definitely listen to those because there's great information in there. But I want to specifically talk about the tender swindler today. I don't usually watch stuff like this in full disclosure because most of it gives me a headache. There are very few romantic comedies that I like to watch, things like that, just because I start overanalyzing because, you know, this is what I do for a living. I analyze situations. I help women remedy them. I strategize with them. We do all kinds of stuff. So I was really surprised that I was actually able to go through this and watch this documentary and be able to not get extraordinarily angry, but it did lead to, I mean, there were some glaring things in there that most women wouldn't necessarily recognize, but glaring to me that I want to share with you so that they become glaring to you and help you avoid these situations. So that one of the things that was glaringly obvious in in this is that If you were looking through the text conversations that this gentleman was having with these women is there was absolutely no meat to these conversations. It was, I love you. I miss you. I want to have your babies. I love you. I miss you. I want to have your babies. I love you. I miss you. Can you send me $40,000? So what I want adored women to understand when you're in this world is you're looking for somebody that intellectually meets you. Now, I'm not saying that this guy wasn't smart in many ways. In fact, he's, he is a genius on how he is able to emotionally manipulate women. But the thing is, is that there were some already some clues there. You have to look into the conversations that you're having. Instead of coming from a place of, and this is what we do, is because we desperately feel like we're never going to get married, we're never going to have babies, we're never going to do this, we're going to be alone for the rest of our life. We operate from a place of desperation and we're really dismissive of any kind of intellectual compatibility. Now, sometimes I do think smart women go in the opposite direction and they don't account for different types of intellectual compatibility. But I will say she was obviously a smart woman, the one to start with. She was a smart woman, but I don't think she took into account how shallow all of their conversations were. You know, not being able to have a conversation and engage, you know, different pieces of the world and life and things like that. One of the things that I make sure, and we'll talk about this more in a second, is when working with women, we're actually qualifying them based on intellectual compatibility or being interesting. I have no problem with wealthy men. I think wealthy men are awesome. But there are men that are wealthy out there that have nothing else to offer besides their wealth. There's no level of conversation. There's no level of real true connection and understanding. It's just he's hitting all of the points. So here, let me give myself to him. Which brings me to point number one, always monitor what's going on. Engage him in different kinds of conversations. See if he is interesting at all. And if he can actually hold some of these conversations with you. Now, number two, this is one that I know is really, really important. 
I don't care if a guy tells you that he's leaving and he's not going to be back for four weeks. You don't meet a guy right away, all right? That's a very advanced skill that most women aren't capable of emotionally. It's a very, very advanced skill. So first off, she was really qualifying him because she hadn't qualified him really in any conversation. She qualified him on all the luxury items he presented himself for. Now, I know in the documentary, they were talking about all the hate she got for that. And I'm not throwing any shade at all, okay? Like I said, I have an appreciation for wealthy men. But being wealthy isn't the only qualification. There has to be a significant amount more even before you go out on a first date with them. Do not, do not, do not, I repeat, go out on a first date the first day that you meet somebody. You need to spend at least two to three weeks holding online conversations or phone conversations or video chat conversations. And those can be, you know, I call them video dates or phone date or whatnot to get to see if this guy has any level of intellectual capacity that amuses you, that inspires you, that you have fun with and that you can engage with. If you can't do that before going out on a first date, you should not do the whole meet and greet thing. One of the saddest things I hear is about women talking all the time, he wants to meet me right away, so I, you know, I went ahead and met him. Ladies, you have to start taking men on your dating pace, and if they fall away beforehand, okay, fine, they fall away. It's not the end of the world. He just disqualified himself, and you didn't have to do anything. This whole meet and greet thing all the time, it is not working most of the time. Now, are there success stories from it? Yes, of course. There's success stories with just about anything, okay? If you look hard enough, there's one success story. Now, you may know somebody that had a success story, but this idea of trying to meet somebody as soon as you can to assess chemistry, either by his part or your part, it fails over and over again. You are much more likely, it's not a guarantee, but much more likely to set up amazing chemistry because chemistry is malleable, believe it or not. If you can find somebody that's engaging before and willing to follow you at your pace, if he's not willing to follow you at your pace, then fuck him. That's his loss. Move on. Do not get pulled into the scenario of having to meet somebody right away. This guy was really good. He laid it all out. He qualified himself with luxury items and luxury experiences in his profile. And then he said, I'm going to be leaving. Would you like to meet for a drink? And somebody's like, sure, I can do this, yada, yada. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work a lot. So be the woman who takes her time. That way you don't have this incessant stream of dating that's leaving a bad taste in your mouth. If they fall off before you actually make it to the first date, that's so much better than having just crappy date after crappy date. Okay? Now, number three. This is a big one. Stop going immediately into exclusive relationships, no matter how hot and heavy it is from the beginning. Just stop it. Okay? It is not doing anyone any good. Again, it's one of those things that at times works out, but more often than not, doesn't work out. So I want you to remember this. You are stepping into my world of becoming an adored woman. An adored woman evaluates exclusivity. She doesn't go into it all willy-nilly and say, ooh, okay, he wanted me. He wanted me really bad. I really liked the excitement, so I'm heading straight into this. No, she evaluates it. She checks out her options, okay? Quit giving away your exclusivity like it means nothing. Your exclusivity is a gift. Remember that. Your exclusivity is a gift. Quit giving it away like it means absolutely nothing. And if you start doing all these things, and I'm going to bring the final point, and this is something that I talked about in catfishing. If you meet somebody online, well, most of the time anyway, unless you've been in a relationship with somebody for a very, very long time, you as a woman should not be giving them money, no matter what. And when you start doing all these steps too, it'll be much more obvious to you that if there's a scam involved, but really important, coming out of all the pandemic stuff, things like that, you as a successful woman should not be giving men specifically that you meet online any money, okay? And if they give you a stop story, you basically tell them, I'm really sorry to hear that. I hope it works out for you. And then that is the end of that conversation. 
Hey, lover girl. Thanks for joining me today and texting this episode to all of your single smart girlfriends. If you have a question that you'd like to submit for on-air consideration or want to learn more about working with me, then meet me over at singlesmartfemale.com. See you there.